Once upon a time, there was a confident little girl who met all her deadlines. This is not that story. Hello and welcome to another postdoc vlog. How is it April already? Help. Basically, I started March in a deadline-induced panic. Uh, that lasted for a good two weeks. So I worked on a lot of evenings, a lot of weekends. It kind of feels good to overwork. Like it feels like you did something extra. So you don't feel as guilty when you're not doing anything the next time. Great. <laughs> So this is the to-do list for March and there were three main goals. First of all, the postdoc paper listed here as temperature dependent parameters because that is what the postdoc paper is about. I want to do a lot of writing on it. Second of all, the Splayfold paper, that was the paper that was rejected last month. I thought I should probably do something about it now to make sure that it gets accepted next time round or at least gets more favorable reviews. And then also very important work on the job hunting part of this job. A weird job a postdoc is. If you have no idea what is going on, check out the postdoc vlog from last month. So with all those hopes and dreams, I went into March, worked my ass off, at least for the first two weeks. And then this is the tada list at the end of March. Lots of orange, which means I did start doing it. I'm, I'm working on it. It's just not finished yet. To my supervisors, please have mercy on me. First things first, I did actually progress a lot with the postdoc paper. The reason why all these things are still orange is because they're not finished yet. So yes, there is an introduction, but there's still one paragraph I want to add. You know, there, there is text. It's just not all the text. Does that just sound like a very bad excuse? There is some text. So I'm going to count that as a win. Then the Splayfold paper, again, kind of worked on it. I find it very difficult to work on this because it's a paper that is a remnant of my PhD. I feel like I have to work on the postdoc paper because that is my job. And then I also feel like I have to search for another job because otherwise I won't have an income. But then I also need to finish the PhD. But in, in that priority list, it's kind of the lowest, but it should also be the highest. Difficult. I did do some things. I did some additional analysis. I know where it's going. I just need to write a few paragraphs. I'm working on it, okay? And then the application that I was talking about, there was a lot of work, learned a lot in the process. It was actually really useful. Let's see if anything comes of it. And if you're wondering how I write such an application, well, I'm doing everything you do, but better. You know these lyrics are all true, each letter. I'm gonna own you, oh, own you. I'm gonna Fake it till you make it. That's my motto. And it really does work. At least, I think it does. No, it really does work. <laughs> and these inspiring episodes of me singing I'm gonna own you over and over again in the hopes of actually having a chance <laughs> at this application. In between, there's just large, large episodes of this. Just staring at a screen, reading it again, changing a sentence, reading it again. And again, and again. Fascinating vlog content. I know. <sighs> we successfully received your application. I just applied. What else happened this month? I gave a comment webinar, which was very well received. You can watch it back online if you want to. Probably in a card, if I figure out how to use a card. <laughs> I just like to point out that in the comment webinar, it looks like I really got my shit together, you know? The background is very um, clean. And this is the behind the scenes. <laughs> Not so much cleaning my room as, as moving the mess around. Um, yeah, so there's a little insight for you. Very good, yes, very good. In other exciting news, I had a haircut. In these times, it's pretty much as exciting as it can get. It looked absolutely amazing. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and bright. And then it very quickly regressed into whatever this mess is. But it's great. It doesn't feel like straw anymore. That's a win. Even more exciting and quite unprecedented, maybe, in these times, I had a very 
cheeky bit of travel. It was essential, don't worry, but it was very exciting. I was on a plane, I was on a train, I saw something of the goddamn country I'm living in. Completely unheard of, no? So now I'm um, enjoying my time on my own, locked up for the foreseeable future, as you know, I should. So this is why I'm talking to a camera. In things that are not work-related that I enjoyed, I managed to finish the two towers of Lord of the Rings, which we were reading for the book club. Uh, I'm just not that interested in Frodo and Sam. Quite hard to get through it yet. <laughs> Theoretically the book club is moving on to The Return of the King. It's a bit too much for me at the moment. I needed something light. I chose to read The Guest List, which is a mystery set at a remote Irish island, which is of course something I love because I like everything to do with the British Isles. It's very good at building suspense. What are the secrets that people are alluding to? It's a nice quick mystery. The other book I read, Red, White and Royal Blue, which is very silly. <laughs> It's amazing. It's set in an alternative universe, quite similar to our universe, but just a little bit more optimistic. And there is the son of the President of the United States, and he has to pretend to be friends with the Prince of England, or one of the Princes of England, Prince Henry, not at all related to Prince Harry. Mm. They're sworn enemies, but then they start to like each other, and then, you know, they fall in love. It's great. I read it in two days. Don't think about it too much, because if you do, it won't make my much sense. But just go along and enjoy the silly, silly love story about a prince of England. I mean, of course I was going to like it. <laughs> It's about the Prince of England. And then currently I'm reading The Secret Gardens, one of my favorite children's books. It's set in Yorkshire and I always wanted to read it while in Yorkshire, which is what I am now. So yeah, I thought let's read The Secret Garden and it's it's lovely as always. I like Mary quite contrary. I kind of see a bit of myself in Mary quite contrary. And then to end this vlog, I just want to mention in the past couple of days I did start watching a show and it is trash and I know it is trash but it's also very exciting and I'm not ashamed of it. It's The Circle which is a reality TV program. It's basically people that go into a house and The Circle is a social network. The contestants are only allowed to interact each other via texts so you can pretend to be anyone. One of the musical actors that I really like and I've seen in Eugenius, Scott Page, is one of the contestants and I know he's a very funny guy because I've seen him on stage and I can't really support theatre at the moment apart from donations and I thought this this is a piece of theatre because he is very extra and I love everything about it so I've started watching The Circle and lo and behold it's so addictive it's every evening <laughs> and it's um, I'm, I'm, I'm totally invested rooting for Nana Dot and Felix yeah Definitely. I think that was it for this month. It started with a deadline-induced panic and I am happy to report I am once again in a deadline-induced panic. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye! Hello and welcome. <clears throat> Hello and welcome. <coughs> that should do the trick. I gave a comment webinar, which was very rosy. Take it easy on my hand.